Welcome to Community Forum. My name is Priscilla Almquist Olson, your host for today, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome today two rather famous members of Easton's, uh, Easton Society. Here we have uh, Robert Buddy Worcester. Many of you know him. Some of, of us older ones know him from Oliver Ames High School, where he taught English and uh, was the Bay baseball coach and was a f quite a famous athlete in his own day when he, when he was a student at Oliver Rames, quarterback, football player, and uh, he'll probably fill me in on things I've missed here. Uh, and here uh, on my, the other side is uh, Jonathan Coe, who uh, has, uh, was an executive with Sears for 46 years. I think you're retired now, Jonathan? Yeah, since 2015. Wow, yeah. okay. Well, he doesn't look like he's a retiree, but he is. Meanwhile, he's going to tell us a little bit about how he got involved in photography and how uh, Buddy, who was the English teacher, uh, probably wrote, or at least corrected, all of the grammatical errors in the book. The book we're talking about is a beautiful image of historic Easton. And why is this book of interest to you, the viewers at home? Because it's the first time ever that a uh, 260, I think, photographs of, of Easton, contemporary Easton, but that doesn't mean all new homes. It means all the older homes which have existed, some from the uh, 18th century, and markers and other um, mile markers and tavern markers, and, um, and it covers all the areas of Easton. So without any further comment, Welcome, buddy. Welcome, John. And for us. Thank you. And um, you want to start us off, Jonathan? Hey, buddy. <coughs> uh, buddy is, um, you know, about why the book even came into existence. Okay. Well, for years I had uh, thought about having a uh, photographic image. Uh, I call it a photographic essay with the text to explain it. And. Uh, for some reason or other, it never got uh, out of my mind and onto the into the book. So uh, I was going by uh, Johnny's house uh, a couple of Memorial Day years ago and uh, stopped to say hello. And uh, uh, I, then uh, through uh, my uh, family, uh, Johnny had taken photographs of Beth and Bobby and so forth, and I said, well, that's the guy. Let's, uh, and uh, as soon as I mentioned it, he couldn't get to work fast enough, and he really loves his work, and uh, you know, it was just uh, sort of serendipity that everything came together, and uh, very fortunate because I, I know of no one that could do the job better than that. that that's the the real essay, the photographic essay. And of course, uh, because uh, we knew something about the places to go to, uh, that was interesting. And uh, then uh, Hazel and uh, Hazel uh, Varela and uh, Ed Hans and Frank joined us in supplying text and filled out uh, what developed into this book. So uh, you mentioned Frank, and I think you mean Frank Menino, who's the current curator at mm -hmm. the uh, this is Eastern Circle Society and Museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, uh, so you finally found somebody who could m realize your dream. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Jonathan, uh, how did you get involved in photography? And I know there's a backstory here that's extraordinarily yeah. interesting. Yeah. It goes back some generations in your family. Sure. Sure. Well. Uh, right. You know, photography is, uh, has always been in, in the, uh, uh, the co-family blood. There's a lot of, uh, uh, my dad, my mom took a lot of pictures. Uh, my grandmother, my dad's side specifically, was, a, was uh, uh, always taking pictures. Uh, but her father, my great-grandfather, Frederick Dexter Jackson, was a uh, photographer. And his brother uh, was the more famous one. That's William Henry Jackson. And uh, he was a, uh, a pioneer photographer uh, and uh, helped uh, photograph and, and chronicle uh, the Oregon Trail. And that was a, uh, uh, he's got many books uh, written about his, his time uh, in the Old West, 
And that's the name of one of his books, The Old West. <laughs> and matter of fact, um, you know, now being a member of the Historical Society uh, and talking about the Ames family and their dealings with the uh, Union Pacific and where the Golden Spike was struck out in uh, Promontory Point, uh, my grandfather, great-grand-uncle uh, uh, Will, was there. And uh, he actually was commissioned uh, uh, by the Union Pacific uh, to take uh, pictures on the last leg out to the west. Uh, and they gave him a car and did a lot of photography. Uh, and back in those days, you needed a railroad car to, be a, uh, to have a dark room. Uh, but anyway, long story short, um, uh, he's always inspired me. I've, I've read a lot about him. Uh, and he lived in 99 which was uh, quite a lifetime, so uh, part of the New York Explorers Club. Uh, just a lot of his uh, photos are at the Smithsonian uh, and a lot of uh, other museums around. But So that got me going anyway. So I've been taking pictures uh, forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, since retirement, uh, I've invested in some equipment and been taking more and more nature and wildlife. I love nature and wildlife, you know, mm -hmm. and especially through Easton. My wife Paula and I, we take a lot of walks. And uh, we go through the sheep pasture, we go to the borderland, we, we hit every place, the town forest, and all through the streets. Um, and uh, just hitting a lot of, uh, getting, a, getting lucky uh, with a lot of wildlife. And you'll see a few of those pictures in here. Uh, That's part of the beauty of Easton. There's so much beauty in the, the nature, mm -hmm. uh, the parks, uh, the memorial parks, Frothingham Park, which Buddy was a director for. Uh, and still is. He's the executive director. My dad was a director there in the 60s. Uh, but so many great, great pictures uh, of mm -hmm. the park. Uh, by the way, he was president of his class uh, and a, a great baseball coach. He was my, I was the catcher for him for three years and he yelled <laughs> at me a number of times and uh, I learned every minute of it too. So, uh, so the park uh, is, is a, great, uh, a great place to take a lot of pictures in every season. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like doing that and getting the fall, getting the winter. Uh, so a lot of these pictures came about through Buddy's vision uh, about encapsulating nature and, and, and uh, the historic buildings that are still in existence. Yeah. Schools that are still in existence. Right. So they have former schools that are private residences now. Mm. So, Well, you know, it's interesting because, uh, as you mentioned, it, this was a labor of love over two years. Mm. So over two years, you captured uh, the different seasons as well, which is so interesting because I think, uh, especially winter, when you have the snow and, and what it does to the landscape as well as the buildings, and speaking of buildings, we have so much to be grateful for. One of the reasons I think that Easton is such a unique and wonderful place is the contribution that the Ames family uh, gave to us. And um, you know, we all know about the, the Anna Ames band and all the uniforms and instruments that she bought and how that started this and culminated in the most wonderful music program here uh, in Easton today. But uh, it's the buildings which have been standing that most of us see every day and enjoy. Um, and um, hopefully uh, this book will also uh, help people to uh, appreciate those buildings and be willing to keep them preserved because that sometimes takes a, a bunch of money. Yeah. You know, there was a, um, talking about that, Frank Menino had a, uh, a, a great uh, visitor to the museum. Mm -hmm. It was one of H.H. H. Richardson's uh, relatives. Didn't know much about H.H. H. Richardson uh, and uh, wanted to go, where do I go? Where do I, I hear there's a lot of famous buildings in Easton that are still standing though, as we call the fabulous mm -hmm. five of the H.H. Uh, H. Richardson buildings and the Olmsted landscaping. But he was there looking to find out about his uh, great, great grandfather. Mm -hmm. So just amazing. Yeah, it is. Well, this book is... is um, I was going to say, one of the things that uh, <clears throat> we mentioned two years, but uh, Johnny is very meticulous as far as lighting, time of day, uh, and you'll see some of the same uh, photos, but the images of uh, are, the timing, the lighting are all mm -hmm. various. So that really is a very important part of, uh, of this. That's why it took two years, too. 
Yeah, I'm sure that, that there were thousands of photos that you had to sift through in order to make decisions, which must have been very difficult. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you have 260 photos here. Well, actually, there's, there's over 550 photos, 260 pages. So oh, we've got oh. a lot of images, <coughs> and uh, we're Excuse talking me. well over 1,500 images at this point, which is going to be probably lead to a volume two at some point. Mm -hmm. So we left, uh, we, we couldn't encapsulate all of Easton there. Well, it's a, a labor of love, yeah. and I, I can say that for everybody involved in this, uh, that uh, proud of the uh, town, its heritage, uh, its buildings, its landscapes, and uh, that really was the thing that motivated, I think, everybody involved in it. Yeah. History, mm -hmm. it's great history, yeah. all of it. Yep. Still standing today. Right. And uh, in addition to uh, public buildings, uh, there were houses of worship, too, that you photographed here. Yeah, there's, a, there's uh, I, I found that uh, <coughs> uh, Excuse me. just uh, enjoyable to, to really Look at, uh, you know, we've got some beautiful places of worship, and we've got a lot of places of worship that are outside uh, mm -hmm. in Easton as well. Um, but uh, we've got some gorgeous uh, uh, facilities and uh, edifices. I, I mean, look at the Unity Church, uh, just whew, incredible. Uh, and we've got some, uh, uh, some churches that are no longer <coughs> churches, like the Unity Church in Eastendale, uh, just amazing. <laughs> Um, so we, we visited all of those. <laughs> yes, we, we, try to, we try to include as many as we could uh, on, on so, some of the places of worship. And, and that's the same type of thing with the schools. Uh, we've got the chapter on schools still standing today that maybe were former schools. <coughs> and uh, I, I discovered, and I'm sure Frank Menino and, and Ed and Hazel knew about this. Uh, I lived on Day Street for all my life. Uh, actually lived in three houses there. Eight Day Street, 18 when Dad ran the park, and <coughs> been living on 14 Day Street uh, uh, for 45 plus years. Uh, but we have a house. We have a house on uh, on Day Street that was a school at one time down in Bay Road area, and uh, a couple of houses up uh, where the the halls lived. And uh, yeah. I look at it and I. And you'd say, "Wow, that that was probably a two-room schoolhouse." And at, I was at one in point. that in that house many times at Christiansons. Friends uh -huh. of mine growing up, and uh, spent a lot of time down that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I understand that Easton has 34 cemeteries. How many did you capture? Not all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd need volume two for that. Uh, but we 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 really looked at. Uh -huh. The list. I, we went through the list and said, let's start with the oldest one we have in Easton. Mm -hmm. So we've gone from that point in time right up uh, to as many as we can. And there's some fascinating stories uh, on the, the burial uh, grounds. Uh, and every one uh, we, we, we checked with uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Reverend Dr. William Ladd Chaffin uh, in his book, Original Easton. Uh, history of Easton, <coughs> and he covers a lot of the burial grounds very, very, very well. Uh, so we went through all of that, and uh, we've got some uh, pretty unique stories that uh, we learned from the book, and a lot of Ed Hands and Frank's uh, research, and Duncan Oliver's research on uh, burial grounds, and especially, uh, uh, I tell you this, there's, there's a couple beautiful stories in there, and interesting ones. Uh, uh, a real tragic one I, I recall is a Barzilla Dean house at the corner of Washington and Depot, that big beautiful yellow federal style house mm -hmm. you see on the corner, part of the Dean family uh, for years. And mm -hmm. But he uh, actually purchased uh, a lot of land uh, over at the Drake uh, burial ground and he was building a granite tomb for his family piece of granite came down and killed him oh, gee. while he was building the tomb for he and his family. Uh, My God. Just what a sad, sad story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just So th there are interesting stories. We've got some interesting uh, photos of some of the, uh, some historic folks in Easton. There's so many, the Revolutionary War heroes. Uh, um, I found that there the, the could be so many more, but uh, mm -hmm. we can only go so far. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we didn't get them all, but we get a lot. Do you, um, Buddy, do you know, um, have you seen the oldest uh, gravestone in Easton? And if so, what year was that? 
I'm going to say 17, uh, that, that's up at Ferguson's, that's about 1773 or 5. Yeah, the old one. Yeah. Now there yeah. may be some that are older, but that, uh, but I think that the oldest stone is up at the end of Pickle Lane, and there's still stones there. Johnny's got a picture of it, yeah. I think. Yeah. We, we we got that covered. And years ago, uh, I came up with an assignment for uh, my English class. They were juniors. Mm -hmm. Bob LaBeouf, I remember in particular, mm -hmm. was among them. Uh, and I had an assignment where they would go out, visit three cemeteries, keep a journal the time they went out, time they got back, what they observed, and so forth, and uh, and get a rubbing that they did then. And they came in, and we had rubbings all up on the bulletin board all over <laughs> the school, and uh, wonderful imagine, imaginative stories, and some just per, based on the history completely. And uh, for a while, there one one young lady brought in an old tombstone, <gasps> and I said, "What you got that?" She said, "It was out in an old Mansfield cemetery. I was driving by. It was out in the road." Oh I God. said, "You bring it right back." Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> she was doing a big, great job. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to come up with sometimes. Wow. Wow. But uh, they had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, some of them I'm sure we could contact. And yeah, you learn so much about history <coughs> just by going That's, to burial grounds. That, was, that mm. was it, you know, really was. Well, I know Ed Hands has, um, we have videotapes of Ed. And he, he, there's one he does about the houses on Center Street. Maybe you've seen that one. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating uh, because he talks about the lives of the people who live there. That's right. And that really makes the house so much more interesting and significant. Right. Yeah. By the way, I did find a gravestone that's older than, that, than the one you had found. Right. It's 1696, I think, or 1692. And it's the old cemetery of the uh, Congregational Church that was torn down. So it's on the corner of Elm Street and Washington. Yes, That's, I remember that. And there's a, uh, if you uh, looking directly at the cemetery, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's the very old and large and, and very uh, black stone, uh, gravestone, that's on the very far left right in the front, st sort of sticking out and saying, hey, here I am, <laughs> you know, really. And <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> I was amazed at that, yeah. So tell me, your, uh, Jonathan, tell me your, your favorite, uh, I imagine you've got many favorites, but oh. if you had to pick, pick one <clears throat> uh, adventure that you took and the photos that came out of that. What, uh, what would you what would you, you pick? You know, you're 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 entirely right. There's, there's so many stories that uh, I've learned so much over the past couple of years. Uh, uh, I was expecting to really do a lot of the, uh, photography, and it, it turned out no, I just couldn't do that. <laughs> I had to find out about those pictures. Now that I really looked at it, and so that was fun. To, yeah. to me, that's fun. Uh, my dad was a history teacher at Brookline High School. And uh, uh -huh. so there's a lot of history uh, in the family that uh, I have interest uh, quite a bit there. So I, I guess the, the one really, I, I'd say really, really cool uh, story is uh, quite frankly about Buddy. We, um, we went to the 1895 Oliver Ames High School, the yellow building on, on Lincoln. <laughs> and uh, that yellow building that's still standing, that was uh, a great, it's a great school. The architecture up front is beautiful, but when you walk in, and I went to that school as a junior high pupil at the mm -hmm. time, um, and uh, the rotunda. Mm, it's gorgeous. The rotunda <clears throat> is just amazing, and I went through there all the time. I never really looked at it. I didn't look at the two fountains. I wasn't reading the inscriptions on the fountains. Uh, all the great names around the rotunda. The beauty of that, yeah. and the way you could say it's, to me, that's 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 a uh, that's a treasure. Did you get to uh, go in the door uh, above where the railing yes. is in the rotunda? There's some pictures there. Oh, good. Of that. 
Because um, when, when we had our uh, 50th uh, Old Reams High School reunion, uh, Hazel, we, we got a school bus and Hazel gave us a tour oh, of Easton and one of the places we stopped was there and she opened the door and we all could stand around mm -hmm. And uh, what a perspective that was, Fabulous. something that, yeah. now when I went to that school, it was 7 to 12. Yeah. That's yeah. why, yeah. as a seventh grader, I got to know all the seniors, yeah. uh, like Joe Giordano and um, uh, Jimmy Elson and, and you know, they yeah, might my, have been Some of my daughters, uh, were, at that time, they, they never got there. But can you imagine all of the Eastern students Seventh to twelfth grade in that yeah, yellow brick yeah, building. Yeah, until, the times have changed. Until the population exploded. We do. We do. <laughs> but yeah. the, the the best story I I have about the rotunda, which I learned uh, from the coach, was uh, that the high school during World War II, uh, yes. they actually had lookouts that went were on shifts at the top of the school, right, and mm -hmm. had to look for warplanes. <clears throat> So there was a chapter in there, and guess who was one of the lookouts? Look to your right. Really? He's, uh, <laughs> and he tell us that story that uh, Charlie you were going. McCarthy and I spent uh, must have been the summer of '44 up there, and we were uh, we would ascend the ladder up to the <coughs> peak, uh, and we would uh, look, of course, east, and uh, we would uh, report all the planes, and most of them were Lockheed 47s that were not any enemy people. So we'd call Darby 47, give the report, and we'd spend, uh, I think it was two hours, we'd go up there. So it was interesting, and Charlie and I had a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> yeah, Charlie McCarthy? Yes. Yeah. He was oh. a good friend of mine. The, oh yeah, he was a great guy. Yeah. Could he play the piano or what? What's that? Could he play the piano or what? Yes, he did. Oh my gosh, he would sit down and, it was amazing. He had a great yeah. ear for music, Good man. and he was a great sailor. I sailed on his, right. I can't remember the name of his boat, but I've been on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and his a wonderful you know, wife, Alice, uh, Alice Kent McCarthy. Does, uh, and tell him <coughs> about the, uh, the marble. Johnny. Yeah, the, uh, the inscriptions, I, I, I did a little dive on the inscriptions. Uh, I am water on one of them, and you know, there's a, uh, uh, it actually came uh, from an ode um, I think it's James uh, Russell Lowell. Robert Lowell, yeah. Robert Lowell. Uh, he, they commemorated uh, the initial water, uh, fresh water line that came out from Lake Kachichuit to Boston. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote an ode for everybody, and that was years before. So there are excerpts from that ode that are on the fountains. Wow. And that's what they are from. <clears throat> and I didn't realize, and it, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Right. Mm. Uh, My name is Water. I come from strange, dark places, and it, uh, there's part of it on one of the marble yeah. and part on the other. So yeah. It's really beautiful. It is. It is. Now, I I thought that there was also a lookout at the Northeastern Grammar School. There may have been. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a part of that. Mm -hmm. Could have been. Uh, did uh, Doug King take us up? The no, uh, that's uh, that's probably volume <coughs> two. We're going to go to the top of uh, oh, both that's schools right, that's at some right, point. That's right. uh, yeah. big, uh, just recently, I, I took some uh, photographs for uh, Fred Ames uh, for his tour last weekend, uh, the senior artist show. Uh, but the third level, which was originally built for uh, the Freemasons, mm -hmm. uh, Paul Dean Lodge, right, and you can't get up there right now. They're redoing the stairwell. So mm -hmm. he wanted me to take a lot of the pictures, and so we presented them, I presented them on a table, and uh, from that window, it's still not as high as the junior, uh, the, the Oliver Ames High School, 1895, yeah. but you can get a great, great view of Northeastern. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so from that, mm -hmm. that east uh, window, which is yeah. fabulous. But that's quite a story up there, too, so that's covered as well. Yeah, it is. I, uh, Ed Hans took some of us on a tour yes. up yes. there, and my, I, I, my dad was a member of the Paul Dean Lodge, and um, so was my uncle, Sigurd, so, um, but I had never been up there, and that eye, yeah. isn't that m mysterious and yeah. mystical and yeah. We've got the eye in here, it's <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, anyway, well listen, um, any other comments you want to make about the book? and? Let us know if, yeah, when, it's, when I, we can wear and when we can purchase I, I, it. I think that's a you know that's something we're uh, we're looking at right now. Uh, we've got 
um, May 19th, Sunday, from 1 to 5 at the Eastern Historical Society Museum. Uh, we're going to release the book. Uh, and uh, first preference is really to the Historical Society members first. Uh, we've got about 200 copies right now, first run. Uh, and um, from all indications, I think it's going to be a, uh, I think it'll be a sellout. Mm -hmm. uh, from all the donations, we had the Northeast and Bob Berg and the Northeast and Savings Bank has subsidized the printing. Uh, and we thank them greatly for that. Uh, in our time, uh, we have donated all our time uh, for the publication. Mm -hmm. uh, the book will be uh, $50 as <coughs> basically a donation to the Eastern Historic Society. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the proceeds are going to the Eastern Historical Society. So uh, that's the proof. <laughs> right, this is the proof. <laughs> and it's the, a beautiful image of historic Easton. And uh, of course we know this is the Civil War statue at the um, uh, Eastern Center. Uh, and um, the, the photos are just spectacular. And you are so talented, uh, Jonathan, and, and we appreciate so much your collaboration with Buddy. And Buddy, your collaboration with Jonathan and uh, Hazel, Ed, and Frank, I'm sure that your contributions are, are equally significant and we appreciate all that's gone in here. Now, the price, I understand, is going to be $50, Correct. which is um, really a steal if you consider all of these photos and the uh, information that's given with, with all of them, too. So you have this historic history, and you have the places and buildings which have created that history. That's the gem. That's the magic. So be uh, at the Historical Society on Sunday, uh, May 19th, and between 1 and 5, uh, and uh, get your book. Remember, Christmas is coming, birthdays. This is a wonderful, wonderful gift, especially for your children who may not be as uh, knowledgeable, or your grandchildren may not be as knowledgeable. Uh, give them a book that represents you and your childhood and growing up in Easton, if you're one of those townies like the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> and that buddy sign it, too. <laughs> yes. He's doing autographs that day. <laughs> and you, too. Oh, why not? Yeah, so you can get the, the author's uh, signatures on the books. So show up, contribute, and remember that the proceeds will go to continued preservation by the Easton Historical Society and Museum. Thank you both for coming. Thank you. Hope you've enjoyed this program as much as we have in creating it. Be well.